Hello, time travelers. I recently got an RTX 3080 Ti Ventus 3X. See, 3080 Ti. Toss. Well, you can stay in this scene, I guess. Over there. Because I needed more VRAM headroom for some complicated editing that I'm gonna be doing. This is my look of disapproval. But I was doing some mining on the side and just, just look at this. It's memory temperature, just so you can see what the normal looks like. It's 56 at idle. 56 Celsius. It's not freedom units. Here it is going 104 degrees when I'm trying to mine because if I've got something that's gonna make me money in the downtime when I'm not editing, well, of course I'm gonna be mining with it, you know? But the mining software detected that the temperature limit was reached and it would stop mining. The temperatures was dropped down to 80 degrees Celsius which is stupid because from my experience, the GPU temperature itself, when mining is 80. So if I stop mining and the memory goes down to 80, that's insane, right? And this is the, and this is the, bleh, can't talk, wah, this is the performance on the mining pole for that particular GPU. Look at it dropping every time it overheated. Like I can't, I can't deal with this. And I stumbled on this guy on the YouTubes, Jim RPG, and he's talking about what the max temps should be on this specific card because he actually has a Ventus 3X. I saw a few of his videos. And I've linked the two videos I'm talking about, about his in the descriptables. In case that's what you're here for. And you want to see more details beyond the basic stuff that I'm going to mention. But he's talking about how the Micron data sheet didn't originally have what the temperature should be for the, the VMEM. And they finally responded and said the temps, which he recommends keeping below 95C at the highest. But like I said, he actually has a Ventus 3X 3090, which in my own mind would probably run even hotter than a 3080 Ti because it's got memory on both sides of the PCB. And I use that as a reference. And I changed the thermal pads out on that card. And look, it's mining right now. That's just the LHR, the low hash rate from NVIDIA. I think it's detecting the lock because I'm recording with OBS in two instances at the same time while also doing this. Well, just look at the maximum temp. That's this column. Go down here, look at the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. The max was 80. Of course, that's the max since I opened this thing. Well, I won't be able to show you right here, so just, here, look at some footage from my last live stream for a couple seconds. All right, yeah, uh, good temperatures, and it's mining at a good rate with numbers that I'm not looking at right now because future slash editing me is going to be looking at those numbers. <sighs> Might as well stop mining for right now until I'm done recording this video. But I expected better from EVGA and MSI. Okay, you guys, you know how to read data sheets. You can complain to freaking Micron be like, what's up? Why you no tell us good temperatures for the VMEMS? <laughs> for the GDDR6X. You don't have to wait for YouTubers to go figure it out and then call it out. And then EVGA is like, oh, if it's not having good temperatures, you can return merchandise authorization, which is what RMA means to us. And then have this cool dude, Jim RPG, tell me what kind of thermal pads to get that are good watts per meter Kelvin science that I haven't completely learned yet, but okay, I took his advice and got those kinds and they worked. This vent moment was brought to you by giant multi-million dollar corporations not doing any diligence. But I'm also buying a RTX 6800. It's in the mail on the way here so I can have something to mine with to bring my hash rate back up a little bit while the 3090 is off being replaced or fixed or whatever by EVGA. Get subscribed so I could tell you what EVGA actually does with the 3090 that I send them. I'm also gonna be testing it in my editing rig to see if it helps me with my complex sci-fi renders and all the layers because it's got 16 gigabytes of VMEM. It's the, the memory versus the 12 gigabytes that's in the 3080 Ti that's in there right now. I'm gonna show you exactly why I didn't get a 6800 XT or a 6900 XT. Here's my mining rigs. 
to show you the, the hash rate and stuff. And I'm going to show you the difference between the hash rates between each of them because, like I said earlier, I mine during the downtime when I'm not editing. So here's my friend's stats because he's got a 6800 and he gets 62 mega hashes at 117 watts. And these are the prices of each card on eBay right now. So it's got the lowest ROI. That's return on investment based off of how much Ethereum is worth right now. And then here's my video card stats. And this is all data I pulled from Tech Power Up. And blah, 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 blah. It's base clock and boost clock are not that far off from its 6800 XT and 6900 XT counterparts. But all the memory specs are exactly the same. So I threw them in here of uh, different scenarios of me buying. This is something I do every time I'm going to buy a new card and I evaluate whether or not it's good for mining, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what I did was I took the base clock and divided it by the eBay average price and got a two for the 6800. And the 16900 XT was a 1.5. 6800 XT got a higher number, which means more price to performance. But then look at the memory because the memory is what really gets you in editing. 2467 and it's the same concept if you look at the, the thing I multiplied the three stats from the, from the memory which is the memory size and the bus and the bandwidth and then divided that by how much it cost to buy one and it did better than the other scenarios so that's that best price to performance based off of my needs and if I end up not wanting to edit with it I'm just gonna mine with it because it's a good mining card and if you guys have been waiting for the 30 days no sugar video, it is coming out next week. It's already edited, uploaded, it's just scheduled. So it's definitely coming out, no more waiting on that. You could see the weird uh, 30 days no sugar support group that apparently other me was going to by clicking the card here. Or, you know, watch it after this video. And now, for this week's tech thing. This week's tech thing. It's something that I finally got. I've been searching for it on Amazon and eBay and everywhere and just regular Google searches for at least a year. And it's a pocket RGB light. It is the S03 Wii light. Why should this be interesting to you? Because maybe you, you like photography, hobby photography, or a little bit of filming now and then. Now you can put a little bit of color in the scene like this off to the side. I can be more dramatic. You got the light, and you got a hot shoe adapter mount thingy, what's it, that goes into the quarter 20 hole on the bottom. So you can put that on top of any kind of camera or tripod or whatever. And it also comes with a USB-C charge cable. So glad to see something that's not USB micro B like my old light. Still gonna use you, I still love you old light. And it only has one external control. That's on off switch. So all the RGB is controlled by an app. The app is free. I found it on Play Store, it's called Wii Light Pro. First, I'm gonna turn it on and point it at my bobblehead TARDIS thingy. So we'll just go ahead and open that, see what it's all about. And I immediately wanna hit whatever the CCT is. I see the numbers. I normally film with my light, well, this light at 6100K and focus. Germany, I'm trying to show off a light. Or you see on here, it's 6100K, turn all the way up to 100. Turn this up to a 100. Focus. They look like the same brightness. That's awesome. Okay. Put this back over here so I get a little bit of secondary lighting. You took all the way down 2500 and all the way up to 8500. That's a really, really cool color, as they call it. I'm glad to have it. And you got these presets down here for 3000, 4000, 5200, 5500, 6000, and 7000. Let's say I set it to my favorite, which is 6100 and then hit plus and call it Rob's favorite and hit save. Where does that go? Hmm. Then I put it on that menu. Is it in my scene? Yeah, there it is. That's cool. So next one's HSL. You can go all the way around the place and choose colors. That's cool. Change your brightness. Next one's RGB WY. What that is is red, green, blue, white, and yellow. So you can change how much of it each one is in it. So there's your yellow, your red, Etc. So you just mix whatever shade you want. White lightens it. Yellow helps you control your color temperature. This XY coordinates one is interesting. Color chip, that's cool. They've got some color chips in here, Roscoe and LEE. If I'm saying it wrong, well, I'm saying it wrong, sorry. Correct me in the comments. 
cyan, deep purple, etc. Change your brightness. And then you got different effects like the flash one, police, fireworks, CCTV loop. Ooh, romantic. All I have to do is find someone to date and then I can use that one. And then the wave. Wave red. And you can turn the speed down because it's a little too fast for me. That's cool. And then color picker. Now this one's wild. Let's point it at this SOS box and hit pick up. And now it's the same color as that. What about the yellow on it? Pick up. And what color is my faith? Oh, okay. And my scene. And that's my scene from earlier, and it sets it back to 6100. So that's a pretty freaking sweet light. Same brightness as my Viltrox RB08, except I have RGB. That's amazing. And that's gonna help me shoot all kinds of different videos. All right, build quality, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because it's solidly built. And for accessories and features, mm, I'm giving it an 11 out of 10. I could have said a lower number than 10 and not broke the thing and gone above the 10, but it's under 30 bucks. And all the features are in the app and it's crazy. There's so many features without being overwhelming. It's like intuitive. I know where to go without even thinking. It's amazing. The only thing is that if it cost more, I would be expecting to have physical switches for a couple of the features on the light itself when it just has an on and off. Light quality, I'm actually giving this a 10 out of 10 because it's a really, really amazing implementation of RGBWY. And the range in the app is just in insane. I love having that whole range of warm to cool that's built into the app. Final score, I give it an 11 out of 10. This light breaks the Robert Jean scoring system. Oops. And now for this week's random Wait. thing. You're not in this scene. I wasn't this prepared for this. Thing comes I'm from... not wearing pants. So? You know, because I'm just shooting a quick video and then I'm going to bed. This week's random thing comes from your dad. It's a sign that says, notice, no signs allowed at this intersection. And I said, what do people put up their own signs? And my dad says, probably yard and political signs. What? I guess he's gone now. And I said, yeah, just say no to politics. And now for this week's dad this joke. This week's dad <laughs> joke is also from your dad. It says, the difference between the bird flu and the swine flu, one requires tweetment and the other an oinkment. And you said, Ha 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 ha, lol. What? Gone again? Well, I guess it's awkward and screen time. Click here to see the video where I tore apart my RTX 3090 trying to improve the thermals. The same one I'm sending back to EVGA soon. And click it that video <laughs> down there in the corner to see whatever YouTube thinks is best. And click here to subscribe to the and channel. And click on this thingy what's it down here to check out the soundtrack channel yeah. because he makes his yeah, own soundtracks. Music. Okay, bye peeps. All right, bye peeps. He's gone again? What does he keep doing? Typically, what? No, where is he?